arresting a 
essentially, you know, like the, even though this was in the early 1900s, the forensics essentially and the science of it did not add up. But just as a side note, Harriet suffered from severe confusion after this attack, which is understandable, and she would succumb to her injuries two months after the attack. But these attacks would not stop there. Attacks and murders continued right through the winter and at every crime scene, investigators were led to different people as the suspect. But in each case, it turned out that the suspects they were drawn to were never actually involved. Here is another excerpt from a letter from the alleged Axeman. Quote, They have never caught me, and they never will. They have never seen me, for I am invisible, even as the ether that surrounds your earth. I am not a human being, but a spirit and a demon from the hottest hell. I am what you Orleanians and your foolish police call the Axeman. If you wish, you may tell the police to be careful not to rile me. Of course, I am a reasonable spirit. I take no offense at the way they have conducted their investigations in the past. In fact, they have been so utterly stupid to not only amuse me, but his satanic majesty, Francis, Joseph, etc. End quote. Now, there were several attacks that occurred that did not target Italians, and they were also thought to be the work of this Axeman, but were never proven. As you can imagine, during this time, the city of New Orleans was put on high alert, and the people were just beyond terrified and beside themselves. I know I would be if I was in a community where something like this was happening. The Axeman in his letters would refer to these people as esteemed mortals and made it very clear that he did not look at himself as a mortal. On the 9th of March, 1919, the Axeman visited the neighboring city of Gretna, attacking Charlie Cordomiglia and his wife Rosie, and killing their two-year-old daughter. Under much pressure from the public, the police would arrest and charge the Cordomiglia family's elderly next-door neighbor and the 17-year-old son living next door. Again, because police felt so much pressure to arrest somebody because the community was so scared potentially by arresting somebody, this would somehow ease the fears of the city, but that would only work if they actually had the killer. The pair were tried for murder and sentenced to death after police forced Rosie wife of Charlie Cordomiglia to say that this bear was responsible
associated with the Axeman. Allegedly, the Axeman vanished from New Orleans in 1919 and was never seen again. But modern research has a new take on the killings, along with the suggestion that maybe there was no Axeman at all. Researchers scouring the newspaper archives discovered murders that took place in 1920 and 1921 in other cities in Louisiana that were said to be remarkably similar to the Axeman murders of New Orleans. So it led to a suspicion that the Axeman had left the city only to take up killing elsewhere. The method and process of the killings were the same as those seen within New Orleans. Joseph Sparrow and his daughters were killed in Alexandria in December of 1920. Giovanni Orlando in Derrider in January of 1921. And Frank Scalisi in Lake Charles in April 1921. All of them were Italian grocers who were attacked with an in the middle of the night, and other researchers have found similar murders even as early as 1910. One of the more curious theories was that the Axeman was angered by the United States Navy shutting down the Red Light District, which included brothels gambling dens, and dance halls where jazz was allowed to flourish. But even if this were a motive for a man's murder, it did not explain why Italian immigrants were targeted. In a book by Miriam Davis that was published in 2017, it is claimed the letter that was written to the newspaper was not actually written by the Axeman at all. Miriam Davis suggested the Axeman was not a well-educated person and was probably a burglar, but the person who wrote the letter was in fact well-educated and well-versed based off of how well-written those letters were. But if the Axeman was in fact a burglar, as is claimed by Miriam Davis, then why was there never any money or valuables found missing or not even found missing, but why, why was it noted that there was never anything taken from the crime scene? So, I'm not so sure I believe that theory to be true. It was suggested that, that a jazz composer by the name of John Joseph Davia wrote this letter because Shortly after the letter was published by the press, he released a composition called The Mysterious Axeman's Jazz. Or maybe the press at the time, who were known for fantastical exaggeration, cre created the letter for impact, and John Joseph Davila just cashed in on it. So, according to researchers, blackhand extortion remains the most likely scenario where blackmailing gangs extorted the financially better off Italian business.
businesses for production money, then made an example of them when they refused to pay. It would mean the murders would have been carried out by multiple people in a city rife with crime murders that were associated with the Axeman in other locations at different times could have been the work of copycat killers, perpetuating the unsolved mystery of the Axeman of New Orleans. The suspect or suspects in the Axeman killings have never been identified and as mentioned earlier, these murders remain unsolved to this day. Confined to a moment in New Orleans history when jazz and racial tension were on the rise. The Axeman, however, did have one last thing to say in his letter. Quote, well, as I am cold and crave the warmth of my native Taurus, and it is about time I leave your earthly home, I will cease my discourse, hoping that thou wilt publish this, that it may go well with thee. I have been, am, and will be the worst spirit that ever existed, either in fact or realm of fancy. End quote. So that concludes the case or theory or story of the Axeman of New Orleans, dependent on if you believe it is real or not. I'm sure it is not surprising to those of you that have listened to my videos before that I will say that I'm a believer in the X-Man. Uh, there isn't much in my brain that argues against this being real and the depth and creepy factor of the letter he wrote to the press in addition to the murders and attacks we know about plus the whole concept of that one night where everybody had to play jazz music gives me such the, the creeps that I just believe it's true so you let me know, please, what you think. I really, really want to hear your opinion, so please comment down below if you think that this is real or not. Please don't forget to comment your vote from the three cases that I have pinned down below. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and...